All right, imagine you have severe depression, severe anxiety, and you get through that and you end up helping over 100,000 people with your nutrition and fitness programs and you build a seven-figure business. That's why I'm super pumped to be able to share this interview and this conversation we had with Coach Mark Carroll. He helps out hundreds of thousands of people all around the world with his coaching programs. He's got an amazing, amazing story. He's built a seven-figure business. So we talk about all those things so you, the health and fitness coach, can get some insight, get some motivation, and start doing some of those things. Here we go. All right. So Mark Carroll, how you doing today, man? I know I know it's Saturday for you and it's early in the morning. So I appreciate you coming on the podcast. G'day, guys. And yeah, it's absolute pleasure to come on and chat. Saturday morning. It's fine. I work every day. So I, I like what I do. So it, it's fun. <laughs> so if I'm not if I'm not on this, I'll just be reading something. And so yeah. very happy to chat. Same here, man. We're workaholics and um, you know what uh, we love what we do so we don't even call it work and uh, we were even saying too before we just like 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 hopped on we we're talking about like small world that we know a lot of like you know fitness uh, pioneers and you know good old lane martin the og um he's a good guy he was our mentor and stuff so it's great man i know we're gonna have a great conversation today amazing happy to do yeah. it so then let's start off with this so i like i like have, uh, asking this question so you're in queensland um and i like to ask him about billboards you guys have billboards out there yeah, but not like to the extent of America where, you know, I was in Vegas okay. last year where it was just like every bill, every hundred meters is like a billboard about <laughs> lawyers or something like that. Or yeah, a bit different. Okay. Okay. So let's just say, let's just say, man, if they were like, Mark, I'm going to, I'm going to grant you like several billboards in Queensland. What would that billboard say and why? Hopefully, hopefully it would say something along the lines of, you know, I'm a coach who, works with thousands and thousands of people and really centers all around actually helping people get amazing results. That's kind of something, you know, I try to pride myself on is the people I work with, they're, they're, they're signing up to really kind of have me deliver on a result. So hopefully it'll be something around my transformations, my results. And yeah, just say as a coach who, who learns science-based and yeah, delivers amazing results, which is, you know, what, what you want when people invest their money into you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I love that, man. And I, I want to go into, I want to, I want to segue into this. I know you said that, um, like during uh, the pandemic, like you went through severe depression and you, you know, gained over 15 kgs. I think you even said too, man, that you, uh, yeah, you just, it was like five months where you didn't train. So I want to talk more about that. Like, like, was it, was it mainly focused on like COVID and how did you, how did you overcome that? So that was a hard time. I think it was hard yeah. time for everyone, you know? So it was yeah. one of those weird things where for me, just before around 2018, 2019, I really got a lot of momentum with my career and my business. When I started coach Mark Carroll, what kind of people see today and I kind of went from, you know, just being an everyday trainer. I was doing fine, but then I really kind of blew up, I guess, from a business sense, financial sense. And then when you went into COVID and you went to this crazy lockdown and stuff like that, it was, I kind of felt a lot of pressure of, well, is is all my momentum going and all those things like and all those kind of terrible thoughts. And I'm a person who, when I lose that routine and feel kind of on top of things, which happened when you know, the gyms were closed and I was limited to home training in our lounge room and stuff like that. So I'm not sure what it was like where you guys were, but Sydney and stuff like that was, we had brutal lockdowns, you know? So we weren't allowed to drive more than like three miles from our house and the police would follow you around and, you know, you'd be driving your car and police yeah. would be behind you. If you're outside your suburb, you kind of felt like, you know, you're you're driving with drugs in your car or something. That's how everyone would <laughs> felt like because you felt like a criminal. Um, so there's just a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. Um, and when I lost that routine, I started to I started to kind of start that chain reaction of negatives. I didn't want to train, and when I I started to lose that sense of purpose with training, and then that really started to trickle down effect with my nutrition, and I started to get into that mode of thinking course i wasn't really getting much sense of you know things that felt good for me the for the first time ever in my life i was starting to um get like that dopamine hit or that sense of reward from ordering 
Uber Eats and eating <laughs> eating terrible foods. And for the first time in my life, I was like, the best thing in my day was waiting for something terrible to come through Uber Eats and eat food. Oh. And it just gets you in that that kind of victim mentality where it's like mm-hmm. the world's against you, even though it's against everyone. And yeah, in that time, you know, I remember I went and in, went into COVID, nowhere near like my biggest in my kind of bodybuilding days where you know i was doing bodybuilding stuff um but then you know i was probably about 82 kilos you know bodybuilding when you know i was using stuff i was probably about 90 kilos so here i was like 82 kilos and i remember after about eight months you know six seven months i got up to 98 kilos um and that you know that was like but that was a 98 kilos of losing muscle Mm -hmm. just getting body fat so it was like the most bizarre thing ever and it's one of those things I think where when you lose momentum in life and you fall off, you keep thinking, oh, I'll get back. And then it keeps chipping away. And it, 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 it's gradual, gradual that accumulation of you know, body fat or anything in life that, you know, those negativities. And then it also all of a sudden hits you. Wow, mm-hmm. I'm so far away. And then it feels that that massive task to get back. And so that's where I felt it was a real, it, it was just like a perfect storm of problems like i've always had a lot of mental health problems and covid again it was for everyone we're, we're having issues you know yeah. like in australia it was a massive thing you know mental health issues and yeah so that's that was a struggle and even then now even two years on i'm definitely not back where i was at my best and stuff like that and it's it's one of those things that's kind of made me understand as a coach a lot more about how people feel and you know yeah. seeing food as a reward and stuff like that so it's for the first time ever, it made me actually feel much more relatable to my clients, which is quite interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, this is really good stuff, man. Like a lot to unpack here. So I have like two follow-up questions like around this, like the, the first one is like, what kind of like, you know, I mean, practical, tactical things did you do to kind of get yourself out of that depression? Right. And then the second thing is like, have you noticed like working with clients that have like that victim mentality or even, you know, suffer with severe depression? How do you work with them? First thing was I, went back to kind of see my like therapist psychiatrist and stuff like that so that was a big thing i'm a big fan of that like i've I've, I've had problems since i was a kid so it's always been something and i stopped for a few years and you know when life's all great and you're feeling on top of the world you know you're like ah you know i don't need it and that definitely helped me get back on track and seeing someone weekly and you know just talking things out something often when you can talk to people and just you realize that it's not the end of the world what's going on in your in your in your mind and stuff like that it's not as big a deal as you think um and then also i got back into actually doing something and it's quite hard for your ego when you fall off and fall off in such a big way and you look in the mirror and you're like oh man this is like what happened to me and and so i started just doing the little things back in the gym um nothing crazy just doing something you know all right i'm going to start training for 20 minutes i'm going to clean up my diet i'm going to stop ordering uber eats every single day and once i got a little bit of momentum and you know i did a post the other day about you know trying to build up your self-esteem again is often from just doing really really little things and that's what helped me gain a little bit of confidence and from that i lost ended up losing about 10 11 kilos which was really great in about three four months um so yeah so that was the the big thing i think getting my confidence back and momentum back um what was the second question, Chris? Sorry. Yeah, the second question is like, that's great, man, because those are exactly what I was looking for, for the audience, you know, but like, you know, we're, there's obviously a lot of coaches that listen to this as well, too. Um, I mean, have you dealt with like any clients that had depression like that, or like had like the victim mentality, or mental health issues and learning from like the stuff that you grew through, you know, like, how do how do you coach them on that with like nutrition and fitness and all that stuff, you know? These days, my clients are much more normally like pro bikini competitors or okay. um, advanced personal trainers but the difference is is that so normally from the outside in you kind of think well therefore they must be on top of their things but something i've realized is well training so many people is even though they're in great shape these bodies people would dream of they all have issues as well and yeah. you know, i think mm-hmm. you get this perception that this beautiful amazing perfect physique <laughs> doesn't have their issues and so it's kind of a different kind of feeling a lot of the times let's is say like those we call them post comp blues you know after a comp they spend months getting amazing shape their entire self-worth their validation is looking in the mirror and seeing how sh- shredded they are and after a comp it ends and they're you're putting their calories up doing a reverse diet or whatever you're doing and all of a sudden that their self-esteem it, they struggle because they're not 
their whole identity of being, you know, looking insane um, in that same light is not quite there. And so often I get a lot of clients these days where it's that that feeling of feeling really terrible in building phases, you know, especially women. It's not, it's quite hard to say, hey, let's spend the next six months in a surplus, not feeling super lean, especially when you're a bikini model or something on social media. So a lot of it's psychology around, hey, like, I remember hearing from John Meadows something about this. It was, it was kind of like the line of he, he used it for around dieting, but I also use it for you know, building phases that if you're feeling crap with, you know, your nutrition, whatever you're doing, especially as a bodybuilder, just remember that you chose this, you know, you're choosing to diet, mm -hmm. either you're choosing whatever you're doing. So not being so down and angry at the world that you're hungry or you're feeling a little bit better because again, you're doing all these things to help yourself in the future go from point a to point b and that's something i try to really get across to my clients is that honestly like being in a build phase is so much harder than people realize for um especially women and when they start to understand that hey i'm not doing it because I, I, I you're, you're paying me to help you give you your best advice to to reach your goals and a lot of the times women and guys i also train um really get discomfort and they get angry at the world and stuff like that because they're not getting that same validation of being super lean so it's just kind of reframing things what mm -hmm. you're trying to do yeah to allow them to get through that journey and make people realize that everything you're doing right now where you don't feel that great that's for the greater good in the future yeah and i remember too man like we used to reverse diet a lot of women too and like man to be able to sell that to them that you're going to be like in a 12 to 16 <laughs> week surplus and potentially gaining a couple of pounds to build up like your metabolic capacity or reverse uh, suppressed metabolism it was the hardest sell ever you know like literally because of the psychology behind it you know what i mean but that was really good what you said that they chose like this path whether it's like dieting or if they got themselves in a suppressed metabolism they have to sit there and get back to where they were right yeah. And even, even further what you said, man, like everyone has like, 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 like an issue or underlying like trauma yeah. that they're dealing with. It's like, mm -hmm. like it's never when like a, a person comes to you and says like, Oh, Hey, like Mark, I want to look like, I want to be in bikini shape or I, I want to look this, this and that. It's like, there's always an underlying reason, man, as to why, you know, why they want to do this. It's never really like the aesthetic part. Yeah. On, on the trauma side, I always laugh in, in Australia. I'm not sure what it's like over in America. In Australia, we have an, epidemic these days of life coaches coming on the scene they're kind of the yeah. pts and you know it didn't work out well so they go to become life coaches and i think that's great i think it's like you know mental health and all that stuff but it's just funny you know they kind of use the thing it's like have you ever experienced trauma and it's like <laughs> who in the world hasn't experienced some trauma if you're if you're above the age of 12 everyone's had <laughs> issues and stuff like that so just on that topic so yeah as you said everyone has issues and everyone is quite different you know it's like that n of n of one you know everyone's got um got things that set them off triggers and stuff like yeah. that and that's why these days despite you know doing all my main big programs where i sell thousands of programs i still love working with you know 10 15 private clients because everyone's different so you're always learning and everything i still learn then you can apply and realize what you were doing was wrong yeah. or something and that's why it's really cool to still always kind of be working on your craft and because people are so different and mm -hmm. you know it's kind of seeing how people react some people struggle with deficits some people struggle with building phases some people struggle with maintenance um reverse dying is probably the hardest thing you would ever get to a client to do and yeah so it, it's it's really important as a coach i think so um for me even though it's not a huge part of my income and stuff these days to to keep working with people to learn from people because everyone is basically you know a clinical trial and mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah. 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 And something too, I wanted to um, go back to, you talked about Mark, cause you said that you struggle with like mental health, like, you know, issues growing up, man. So, um, you know, if you don't mind me asking, just going deeper on that, like, where did that kind of stem from? I had a lot of issues when I was really young. Um, so various things happened, which, you know, I, I don't want to kind of talk about, obviously I don't really talk about that, but when, you know, when you're young, which leads to some issues when you're older and stuff like that. And so um, I've been diagnosed a lot with different things when I was really young, depression and then mm -hmm. um, bipolar. And most recently, the main kind of diagnosis is kind of a um, borderline personality disorder, which generally comes from trauma when you're a child or something like that. Um, so that's something where for me, it's borderlines basically, you know, kind of really 
rapid kind of mood swings were up and down so yeah. my kind of personality is not like angry like you know but it's more like when you feel good something happens you feel really good when something doesn't go great you feel bad but then mm. really really bad so it's, it's it's not that kind of going a small small swings it's really large swings and that's why it's quite hard obviously as you guys would know running a business you're going to have those good days you're going to have those bad days good weeks and for me you know it's kind of like a and if anyone anyone knows me, they, it's 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 a very much like a roller coaster. When you feel great, you feel great, and when you feel bad, you don't feel great. And so that's why it's it's hard in business. You know, be, being in business, it's trying to be really level headed, trying to be you know somewhat stoic with with life. And mm-hmm. having borderline personality disorder, I can tell you, is stoicism is the furthest thing you kind of get from it. So it's it's been an interesting one for me, and that's why. A couple of years ago when I started Coach Mark Howe, everyone, you know, I had business partners and other things where I was always kind of just the face. I wasn't the business side. And everyone, everyone was like, you can't run a business and, you know, but I've managed and I've, I think I've done all right the last few years. And so it's just, yeah, it's kind of understanding who you are, understanding yeah. your limitations. And, you know, I have a team around me of the more obviously kind of tech side and stuff like that. And, yeah, it's, it's important to find people who – make up for your kind of your deficiencies and stuff like that. Yep. So when I'm not feeling good, I've got people who will run my meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's an interesting one. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I think too, like, I appreciate you sharing that Mark. Um, and I, again, man, it's like, it is, you know, it's a, it's a roller coaster with entrepreneurism and, and then throw in that thing called life, right? Like that's never a linear road. Yeah. Um, that's a tough one itself. So then like, I'm interested too, like, like, was it what got you into fitness? Was that like something that helped you just overcome just like those issues, just going into the, the weight room, like just hitting the iron, seeing body compositional changes? Because real quick, like quick backstory on us, we lost our father when we were 17 years old. He he passed away in a car accident, like unexpectedly. We turned to alcohol, you know, we got into a lot of fights, like went to went to jail a few times. So we've been down like that dark road. And what got us out of that trouble was the the gym going to the gym like alleviate our stress and anger so what was that what kind of like got you going into the gym and like where you're at now when i was really probably in my uh, very early teens i was your i was your typical kind of guy you know low self-esteem wanted to thought the gym being jacked would kind of solve all my problems you know mm-hmm. i, I love the ww me, you know, I love The Rock, John Cena. I was like, oh, <laughs> these guys are jacked. So they, they, they're killing it. You know, I loved Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my real driver. You know, I thought if I could get jacked, have abs, all these girls would want me. And then in the end, it was just the guys that were impressed, typical, um, and the girls didn't care. But <laughs> I I loved um, rugby and stuff like that. So my big goal was kind of play for Australian rugby and in high school that was kind of the working towards that and then i remember now like in in australia sports we don't really we have all different teams i was in like what we call the first which was like the top team at school and um i actually got in a fight i, I went into the crowd and knocked out a parent mm-hmm. from the other team um oh, and so then i got suspended from school for three months i got banned from rugby um and so basically all that dream of kind of playing for australia and then got uh, got cut so that was when obviously i was having a lot of problems and anger issues as as you do um obviously with my what i said and so that kind of then led me to miss school obviously i missed pretty much all of our final year of school so i basically passed but didn't really pass um so i couldn't get into university or anything like that I had absolutely no options for university i um, couldn't really push towards sport at that time because of the the name i had and stuff like that so since i love fitness it just seemed like a logical choice personal training and i got yeah. into that and i thought well you know you can get paid to you know help people and it felt like at the time was the one thing i could actually do well and yes yeah, so it got me into it and how the how the world is right now with social media and stuff like that it wasn't the cool t- t- kind of trendy thing being right. a personal trainer back then yeah. everyone's like oh okay like you know it, it was it was a it was a frowned upon job in kind of in the world you know it's just like oh you work in a gym or something like that it's just a basic job so yeah. it's funny every, these days you know everyone seems to want to be an online trainer and stuff like that but <laughs> yeah. it wasn't as as it is now but yeah it was just an option for me and to at least do something that I actually 
could do and get into and yeah so where i'm at now with everything it was definitely never the plan you know you don't you don't get into this what i'm doing now it, you definitely didn't think of it like you know 16 years ago when i started yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's crazy though man because it's well, yeah really quick chris because it's impressive because you've man you've sold over a hundred thousand programs and you've yeah. worked with over a thousand hundred clients i mean that's that's a lot of lives like that are impacted you know and transformed so that that's impressive mark yeah i think we're over like probably close to about 140,000 actual training programs now and stuff like that yeah it's crazy um, which is pretty cool and stuff like that and and yeah so it's a lot of people um a lot of people using my my programs and yeah so when you're where i was in australia in sydney you know seven eight years ago just trying to get a few clients in your local gym and stuff like that versus now you know helping people all all over the world it's 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 quite it's 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 quite bizarre, you know, when you think about it, you know, when you're Australian, you don't think too much about anyone else will kind of know you and stuff like that. It's not quite like being in America where, you know, you make it big in America, you tend, tend to make it big anywhere. But in Australia, it's kind of like, all right, cool. How, how can I get some people? So now America is actually my biggest market, which is quite interesting. So it's wow, like America crazy. number one, well over Australia. So Australia is number two and then UK number three. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, man. yeah. Respect, man. That's really awesome. This is really yep. inspiring, man. Like for other coaches too. So I'm gonna just kind of stay on this topic. But like you said that you started in the gym. Was that roughly around like 18, 19 years old? As a trainer or yeah, trainer. Yeah. 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 So I did something a little bit different in a I'm not sure what you guys do, but yeah, I had uh I was doing more park fitness. So I'd do like, you know, boxing in a park, you know. So I, was, okay. I used to do boxing and stuff like that. And I was doing circuit classes. I actually, where I lived was not a fantastic area um, growing up. It wasn't like a anywhere near like a, you know, you'd be kind of corporate gym train and something like that. So I trained at a very, very small gym, which wasn't going to be the the area where you'd have fine PT clients from a affordability standpoint. So I never kind of got into a gym to work at for about the first five or six years. I was just okay. doing literally... So everything I do now is totally different. I was never training anyone in the in weights and stuff like that. It was very much boxing classes and stuff for people when I was working. And so it took about like five years to get into a gym. And that was only because I ended up moving to another area and getting to that gym. And once I started working in the gym and then things obviously took off a lot more because, you know, I was, I was doing something I was actually passionate in because obviously I was training a lot then. And then, yeah, and that's where I kind of started to learn a lot more about education mm -hmm. The person that I remember what I first kind of saw was like Charles Poliquin back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, who's this yeah. guy? And before, obviously, you know, obviously Charles Poliquin had some great things, some not so great things around nutrition and stuff like that. But it was the first time I kind of thought, oh, wow, you, there's all these courses outside, you know, because it, it wasn't like the, what it is today. And so I started doing some courses and reading his stuff. And so he was kind of a big foundation on what I do with training. And that, that really started to make me learn. And when you start learning and you start to realize how little you do know, it's quite, it's quite yeah. exciting because like, oh, wow, like, man, like I can get so much better. There's so many ways to improve. And that's where from about 2000 and... 14 to about 2017, 18. I think I did about like $200,000 worth of internships, mentoring and courses all around the world nice. and everything I would make, not that I was making much back then, you know, I'll just invest into courses and learning. And I just, my goal was like, I tell everyone, I want to be the best coach in the world. That's all I want to, I want to have the, you know, the highest session rate in Australia for PT. I wanted to do that. And I did that and I wanted to do all these things. And, you know, it was never a standpoint of learning to create a business like I do now. It was just, yeah, I just wanted to be the person that if you wanted an amazing result, you would seek, seek me out. And that was the real passion for my education, just to just really be great at my craft. Yeah. yeah you, you focus literally like a hundred percent on the skill and just personal excellence at it, man. And that's kind of like what got you to open up those doors. So that's amazing. And then also too, so five, six years you were doing like just outside, like, you know, workouts, boxing and stuff. Then you moved into a gym. So when did you start like online training? And when did you start that mentorship that we were talking about with Lane Norton? Online training was something I only really started to do around about 2018 and, and I was still okay. working in the gym. So 2018, I was lecturing. I lectured 
all around the world in about five, six countries. I had seminars I was running to PT. So only when I had about 3,000 followers on Instagram when I just started and I was getting 60, 70 trainers at courses around the world, which is really cool um, to come learn from me. And online was something where it was just you kind of pushed into, obviously, because you're doing courses around the world and people would say in, you know, England or Hong Kong or something, I'd, I'd want to train with you. So I was very hesitant. You know, I'm not a, I was never a tech guy. I was never, you know, a systems guy that well, you know, I was, I was great. At, everything I did was working with one-on-one and as the world changed and more people want to work with you, you're obviously in a gym just limited to people in your city and suburbs and stuff like that. <clears throat> so online was a, a really gradual process and then, and then around 2000, start of 2019, that's when I started um, officially kind of my Coach Mark Carroll business. And the whole idea was that with, with that was I went from obviously having about, you know, 20, 30 clients in the gym, 20, 30 clients online, and I was getting pretty hectic. And that's when my client, um, Lauren Simpson, won the WBFF World Bikini title mm-hmm. back in 2009. 17 actually and after that i was getting hundreds of inquiries for online coaching a <laughs> week like Damn. every time i'd open my email I'd just be endless inquiries and that's where i was like yeah this is not achievable that's so that's where i created my guidebook program my first one and you know i put something out and it's quite funny i didn't know i was, wasn't expecting um not sure what to expect and when i put out my first program All right, just give me one second. We'll get back to the training, okay? Now, look, if you are looking to enhance your content, if you're looking to really build what we call a content machine, okay, we have this awesome worksheet for you. So just check out the link below and you guys can download this awesome worksheet where there's like three or four different type of like exercises in there. You guys can really roll out some brand new content for your guys' online audience, your guys' brand and your offer, okay? Now back to the training. Back in 2000 and start of 2018, it sold, I think, 5,000 copies in the first week. Wow. Oh, wow, okay. That maybe there's something here and again so a lot of the times you you do stuff without much expectation and then you go oh wow okay maybe there's something here and, mm-hmm. and that's what led me to doing you know the guy books and the online programmings where you i quickly realized hey i can't work with so many people but at least they can get a taste of what i do um, at a very affordable price and that's what really i guess blew up for me because then i was having that kind of compound effect, you know, thousands of people using my program, then doing, I'm um, sharing it to the audience, what they're doing, sharing their workouts. And I had a yeah. lot of women using my programs. I had a lot of um, big influences. I was training that uh, someone like uh, in America, I was training, uh, I'm not sure if you know her, her name is Fit Girl Mel. Um, she was Kim Kardashian's coach and um, Kanye West's oh, coach. Oh, that's funny. She, we, we, we used to go to uh, the Mecca wow. in, in Venice Beach and he, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we knew who that was. Super nice, super nice person. Yeah. Yeah, so I trained Mel for a while. Um, she actually hired me for mentoring. So I was training her back when she was training Kim and Kanye back in <laughs> 2018 and stuff like that. And so when, you know, she would, Obviously, obviously they've gone off their the, the ways. Um, <laughs> those two celebrities, so we don't need to talk about them. But back when they were, you know, pinnacle and popular for the right re- more pop, maybe not for the right reasons, but they're still more popular than they are now. Obviously, um, yeah. And so whenever I'd go to America, I'd hang out with Mel. You know, she'd always share me, and you know, he got my name out into America massively, and I had clients yeah. in the UK and sweden and stuff like that who had millions of followers and my girlfriend and stuff like that so it was it was really cool because i went from kind of being this coach kind of behind the scenes you know i wasn't a social media guy to all of a sudden all these huge kind of influences putting me out there on social media and then it just really kind of blew up you know that compounding effect of more people kind of talking about you and stuff like that and so that's what really laid the platform for getting me kind of out there because it was never, again, never the intention um, to do that. Yeah. And uh, man, thanks for sharing that, Mark. That's, That's like so cool. Gold, so, so good. And, and that, that brings me to my next, like, you know, uh, thing that I want to talk about is like building like an online personal brand as a health and fitness coach or influencer, whatever we want to call it these days. But I mean, you, like, again, man, you have a large following. You got yourself out there. Like you've met some right people. You had the right clients to get you out there too. So you had some good stuff going. And and honestly, like on your content and everything, man, you're very genuine. You're very giving, very value-based and honest. So what do you feel like that? Like 
if you're if you're like a if someone's like a fitness influencer or coach right now, like what do you think they really need to do to build that brand? I'm really old school with kind of business in a way that I'm I'm a big fan of. You should just be really great at your craft. Firstly, yeah. um, I agree. Obviously, things if you're in business to create a product or whatever and sell it, but in in the fitness industry, you know, I've I've never once you know said a bad word about anyone on social media. I've never called out anyone you know for the engagement. That's my big thing. No matter what anyone says about me, I never answer with anything negative. All I've ever wanted to do was stand out for the right reasons. You know, I was just wanted to. I wanted to be seen as you know the best of the best at what I do, and I always just thought that that would eventually lead to good things. And a lot of the things in life, I find you know meeting the right people and and stuff like that. It's 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 about luck to some degree, but it's also about then when the time comes, you actually having the skills to make the most of that opportunity. And yeah. so I got asked to train Lauren, who's now my girlfriend, and she was you know, one of the big influences in the world. I, when I got that opportunity, I then coached her and she then went and won the world title. So I got that opportunity and then her winning the world title really blew me up. But if I hadn't spent the last decade religiously learning, then I wouldn't have had the skills to do that. And then likewise, you know, Fit Girl Mel, you know, she seeked me out for mentoring, you know, because again, me spending years, learning and then educating and then I trained her and we I remember we did a really good reverse diet and then she shared it so she then shared it to a massive platform so again the right person can really blow you up but it was yeah. the fact that I spent years having the skills and then when I got the opportunity to work with someone it was always a home run like I really delivered they got an insane result it wasn't like you're just working with them and there was actually you got the chance and then you you hit it out of the park so I'm a really big fan of obviously having the actual skill set to mm -hmm. deliver because here's the thing right like in business i'm sure you guys will all say it is that there's people on here on social media and they spend millions on ads and stuff like that a lot of people can spend a lot to you know get a client but for me it's always about you know the customer lifetime value how can yeah. we keep that client and the only way you really keep a great client like that is obviously you keep delivering and keep them coming back and back and back and that's through actually when they buy something from you it delivers they get results they find it enjoyable and they want to come back and, yeah. you know there's definitely more people who would work with way more people than me but they have you know terrible terrible retention rate so Things like that. So my big focus has always been, all right, if I can get someone in, how can I keep them? It's always a lot cheaper to keep a client than to keep getting new clients yep. and stuff like that. That's kind of been our focus. I've always spent very little on ads. I really like the I really like the Gary V kind of formula of just giving, giving, yeah. giving, 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 giving. <clears throat> um more you can give and sometimes People give, but you know, want to give something back. Most of the time, people don't. You know, you have a big audience. Not everyone will ever buy anything from you. But you know, the more that you can give value, I think a lot of people, especially a few years ago, were so hesitant to actually to provide value because they think, mm -hmm. oh, someone will copy it, someone will steal it, or and by not wanting to actually show that you're you have knowledge and give people something, then they really lost out. So that um, that whole sense of using your platform to actually provide value to people has always been really big for me and then balance that out with provide value you then actually have the skill set and product to deliver on the so-called value you're yeah. you're talking about you don't want to just look good from the outside you also want to deliver when they actually get into your system which will allow them to stay yeah. yeah, that's that's so good. I'm so glad that you mentioned that about just like, you know, when when the timing comes, you know, I feel like everybody does have an opportunity, you know, with the timing, um, but they have to be ready, man, because there's so many people out there these days where if let's just say, for example, a health and fitness coach, like they have this entitled mindset where it's like they want a huge following right off the bat. They want, mm -hmm. you know, a six or seven figure business within one year or something like that. Right. They want to be on a big podcast or big YouTube channel, you know, but they're not ready for it, though, you know, because they don't have the skill set. They don't have the reps and sets to learn from. It, you know so i love that that you got to put your reps and sets in man, and be ready for that opportunity when it comes yeah or, or they or they'll think really quick man like oh i just got to post like a bunch of like bullshit like selfies and it's just about it's all about me 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 look at me 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 to where it's like man that only goes so far i 
I think more than ever now with social media, you know, you can blow up so quickly with things like that. And yeah, people think it's so easy, you know, to become a six figure trainer and stuff like that. And, you know, and they get into it for those kind of reasons. Like I remember I was talking to a while ago, Brett Contreras and mm-hmm. talking about how like, you know, like we've both obviously done pretty well with our businesses and stuff like that. And, you know, we both have, you know, eight figure businesses now. And I remember him saying, and me saying it was a while ago was that, you know, you never got into becoming a PT to become a six figure trainer, you know, all these courses these days about becoming a six figure trainer. Originally, you'd never even thought about that. You were just trying to, you know, I was just trying to make money to pay my rent and live. <laughs> and so we, you were just doing it and you doing courses was just because you wanted to get better results and stuff like that. These days now, through the social media, it's very much, hey, let me learn how to be a videographer. Let me learn how to create trending sounds and reels and how to go viral. So a lot of the education is about stuff which is, actually not any skill set to actually become a great trainer and it's all around how can i go viral how can i grow my audience how can i do this what what the angles and stuff like that and that's one of the frustrating things is that it's literally the key thing to helping people is what people aren't really focusing on it's all so much of the tension these days especially the young crowd is like how can i blow up how can i go viral as quickly as possible and he and anything that's going to go viral is most likely going to be something that's entertaining or clickbaity and that's not normally going to be deeper education and that's why it's very hard these days for myself or other educators is that it's you're definitely not getting the explosion of growth and stuff on social media as we once were Mm -hmm. yeah there's a saturation but it's just I think they say, you know, people's attention span, thanks to like TikTok, is like six, seven seconds. Now or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like, I start talking. I'm like, all right, I'm going to talk about this post. And then before I know it, it's been like 10 seconds, uh, people don't care. And, <laughs> and so, you know, it, it, it's, it's quite hard. And yeah. So, and that's why I think the industry has some good things these days. Like I was, talk- I was just talking Cassim Hansen the other day, if you guys know Cassim from N1 and was talking mm-hmm. about just the industry as a whole. Um, and we're saying that basically, you know, where the industry is, it's just bigger. Like it's not better or worse. There's more good. There's more bad. There's more, mm-hmm. you know, Dallasy people. It's just like it's just growing, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's getting more great stuff. And you know, for people, it's all there. They, but they what they choose, what they, you know, there's so many great people you can follow on social media. There's so many great people you can yeah. learn from, but you just need to actually be looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Man. Yeah. So what I, I want to uh, switch over to some other deeper <laughs> questions like around lifestyle and mindset, man. So like the very first thing I want to know too, you said that you did switch to being like a morning person, right? To where you found that, that you're more productive and you actually enjoy it. So if you don't mind, like what are some of the things that you do, like morning rituals or routines or systems you have that, you know, help you play offense, not defense? So I'm a big fan of reading, you know, I read a, a book a week or a little bit more probably on average. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, I went from never reading to reading hundreds and hundreds of books the last few years, and it's been a uh, fantastic for my mental health. It's been fantastic just for, for every aspect of my kind of life. And I used to read really late at night, and you know when you t- when you're tired. So now these days, I wake up. The big thing is I wake up the same time every morning, and that that's been a real big help. That structure. I try to go to bed earlier. I wake up the same time normally about five minutes before my alarm, which is always shows you're in a really good kind of sleep cycle. And what time is that at? I wake up normally about 5.30. Okay. So I I try to make sure I'm up by 5.45, which is, that's early for me these days. (laughs) So it's not not crazy early. You know, my girlfriend gets up like 4.30. But (laughs) we um, get up, feed the animals. And what I always try to do, everything that starts my day is I go read. I try to read for 45 minutes. Um, I really like reading business books. You know, you get optimistic reading business books or something like on along those lines. It makes you really motivated to go work on something. So yep. then that's when I'll then try to go and get started. Either you know work on a social media post um, in the morning, try to get it over and done with. If I'm in a good mood, that done. Or that's when I try to do, do some meetings. I'm always much more productive early morning in a, in a much better mood before, you know, the, the joys of stresses of life happens throughout the day. So yes, yeah, so I just try to really just crush things in the first few hours of the day and then 
that's where I generally go to the gym mid morning. I actually like to have like in the middle of the day, not doing too much um, from a work standpoint. And then I love like my favorite time. So to work around about four o'clock to eight o'clock okay. in the afternoon, I feel, I feel super productive then. And then super productive in the morning. I think it's from <clears throat> decade being a personal trainer where your clients were early morning and then yeah, after, yeah. after work <laughs> i'm just so used to the middle of the day being like my free time i like going to the gym where it's quiet and stuff like that so even after all these years of not being in the gym i'm just so conditioned to all right this is my block from 6 to 9 30 it's going to be all out then four o'clock eight o'clock or something like that and that that just works for me it's quite it's quite different to other people um but yeah so that that's kind of my structure yeah that's yeah. solid man yeah, and thanks good. for sharing that it's it's i mean it sounds i mean it takes a while to build that skill set of like focus and discipline that's what we're huge on we practice i mean we preach that chris and i are, are big on that with our morning routines to play offense not defense so it sounds like you're very focused discipline is there anything that you're distracted by right now <laughs> <Phone. Yeah. laughs> the worst thing in the I world, hear man. I hear you. Yeah, so I, was, I started reading a book the other day. What was it called? I was sorry, listening to it when I was walking. Because this, this is kind of this is my first book on Audible. What's it called? Those damn phones. It's indistractable. In that, oh, so that Neil, Neil something, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to listen <laughs> to that because, you know, you go to – you know, my, 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 my job is, you know, a lot of it's social media. So you go your phone, right, I'm going to post, go to Instagram and then something good old algorithms trigger you. So oh, okay, I'm going to read that. And then you <laughs> scroll, 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 and like, stop doing it, stop doing it. Um, so that's definitely my own. The only thing that distracts me in life is my phone. Um, because it's just one of those things that just good old algorithms. It just literally draws you in and, you know, I have to be on my phone, you know, often emails and, um, running emails on my team i've got team in america and stuff like that so we um message through whatsapp yeah. so always kind of on my phone and it's just those little things and you you don't you don't realize until i start to learn more about just how much those little five minute breaks that you think you're gonna have turn into 20 minutes 30 minutes and you really lose your routine your not your routine your rhythm of your learning or your work schedule. So my biggest weakness in life by far right now is just that ability to be distracted yeah. and just lose that workflow. So I'm trying to get, you know, put my phone on airplane mode. I'm trying to put it away from me at the moment when you know, I write a lot. So when I write, I try to leave it in a different room yeah. and just go, this is it. Um, but yeah, so yeah. that's it. That, that's definitely for me. Yeah, I you know. And it's like, I think that's for the majority of people. And like, um, even I, I say too, like, I think it robs us too from just like, you know, stopping and smelling the roses, right. Being present, being grateful for, you know, everything that we've done because it's just, we're like glued to these phones and it's just, it's just constant dopamine. And it's just, uh, you know, you can't stop, especially running a business and social yeah. media and everything to where it's just, it's very challenging. It's very challenging, man. So I get it. I, I'm with you on that too. Something I find as well these days with social media a lot of you know i love i'm a numbers guy i love stats i love seeing mm -hmm. you know um how things are going but that's also can be a detrimental to you know you wake up and go oh my post last night only got x amount of likes or <laughs> views or my link to this and there's so much data available for you to measure but when yeah. you happen to when you're constantly measuring it every single day every <clears throat> single hour yeah it's not healthy know, if you wake up with a you know you can see your numbers in business and you feel great for the day. If they're not great, then I feel down. That's one. The, another thing is just, yeah, constantly looking at the data and, you know, social media and stuff like that, you're following and stuff. It can really impact your mood and stuff like that, your self-esteem. So trying to actually distance yourself sometimes from that stuff, yeah. I think is uh, really important just for your, yeah, your self-esteem throughout the day. 100%, yeah. man. Yeah, it's crazy how that stuff can just really mess with your mind. But um, the next thing I want to ask you, man, is a really deep question is like, if you had five years to live, what would you stop doing? And I know one of them would be like, the, the eliminate the phone probably, but like, what else though? Like what else if you had five years to live, what would you stop doing? I'd probably stop trying to just be so hustle mode work. You know, I'm, I'm a person who has gotten very into trying to create a better life, you know, trying to work. But that's also come 
at the cost of probably missing a lot of social events, mm. um, not being as great a friend as I could be because I'm a very preoccupied with goals, you know, like a little bit of success, it becomes contagious and you want more and more and more, you know, so you're just doing more and it can often come at the cost of a bit more balance in my life. So definitely trying to be not so work mode, actually having weekends and, you know, using that time with your family, your friends, and being a bit more open to saying yes to opportunities yeah. outside of just work. And, you know, I, I I love reading and stuff. You look about investing and, you know, you kind of say, uh, do the hard things now to, you know, live a life um, unlike other people in the future. But it also becomes where you start to lose a lot of the balance. And you know, I'm 34 now and, you know, this is the youngest I'll ever be. And, you know, the, the whole social life and, you know, good people around you definitely would probably try and not work as much and try to be a bit more open to opportunities and friendships because in the end, you know, I've, I've made periods of a lot of money, you know, I've had periods where, you know, I've bought Ferraris, Lamborghinis and McLarens and stuff like that. And, yeah, you know, I once had like a million dollars in cars in my garage and it was the most depressed I've ever been in my life. And right. so all that stuff is like I had all these – things and i can tell you right now despite what you you know when you don't have those things oh man i'm gonna be so happy when they don't do much for you um what you know whereas you go see a friend and have a great time just chatting watching tv watching sport you know it can do so much for you know as lame as it sounds like your soul and just smiling laughing and stuff like that so having more of something does not mean it's better especially so definitely try to improve my relationships that's that's probably the big one yeah yeah Yeah, there's there's definitely a cost to everything man like it's just it's like what price are you willing to pay you know and like success there's always a price man there's always something that that's going to get that's got to give yeah that opportunity cost whatever you put your effort into time into there's something else missing out so it's it's one of those things yeah when you really want to succeed and have big goals you go really you know tunnel vision and that's great but you can also get a lot of burnout you can also get a lot of a lot of when things aren't going great and it's the only thing you're working on in life it can be really hard for you and that's why i think it's it's definitely healthier to have other good things in your life so when say work's not going as perfectly as you like there's other things kind of bringing up you to feel good build up your self-esteem and stuff like that outside of just your business yeah 100%, 100%, man. So then like, what, what would, what's, what's next for you, Mark? Like, like you've accomplished so much, man, at 34. I mean, like what's next? I feel like I'm in that kind of part of life and business where you've gone up really fast and then now you're kind of going, kind of hovering in a great spot, but it's kind of with the way the world is, you know, I've seen a lot with <laughs> industry at the moment a lot of people really blew up through social um social media in you know the COVID times and now the the world the economy and stuff like that interest rates Mm -hmm. pretty interesting time so at the moment i'm just trying to see what kind of happens with the world everything i'm working on right now i enjoy working on i just want to be able to be in a position to grow it work with more people um keep improving my business the big thing is like i said i never I never got into this originally to be, you know, this big business and be this business person. So yeah. a lot of the things I do, I always like to say, you know, I'm learning, learning on the fly. You know, I'm not a business mastermind or anything like that. So I really enjoy learning and trying to improve it. So I've I know that I I know that well, if I can become better from a business sense, a marketing sense, and all these things, then potentially I can get my products out to the world even more so yeah. that's going to be my big focus is just how can i keep just growing what i'm doing i don't don't feel like i need to evolve too much right now i'm really happy with kind of what i'm doing it's just about acquiring the skill set to be able to keep growing and that's why i said i love learning and yeah, it's really just seeing what happens well i try not to something i've learned is not to be too fixated on an exact specific kind of result like Mm -hmm. let's say if you want to be successful and you want to you know i want to be massively successful sometimes that through the way the world changes is not always going to be the exact thing you envision and you Mm -hmm. also need to be open to things changing so as a 
as I said earlier, my goal was to be like the best in-person coach in the world. That's why I did all those courses. But then, you know, the game change of online and social media. And so then I deviated. So I'm probably much more successful now than I would have been just working with a few people in the gym. So I'm always trying to think, well, what opportunities arise? How can I deviate? So I try not to get too obsessed with the exact, you know, what I want to do. Yeah. I'm I'm obsessed with trying to be the best I can be, which is super cliche, mm. but it's kind of, you know, I remember Jeff Bezos saying something like that, you know, be like obsessed with, you know, getting to your greatness or something like that, be, but be able to also deviate on what takes you there. Um, something along those lines, I probably butchered that, but you get mm. what I mean, you know, so a lot of the times, you know, th- some things, even with products you release and businesses you do, you think, man, this is going to crush it. And that doesn't do something yep. so well. And then something else you did, which was probably a much lower on the pecking order, then all of a sudden crushes it. So then you, you learn, you know, a lot of the, for me, I work on mass these days, you know, I need hundreds of thousands of people. And so they're, they're, they're the boss, you know, they decide what, what's in, you know, so I provide programs i provide you know the knowledge out there but in the end it's the audience that really decides where where you really take things so often it's it's learning and seeing what people like and you often get that wrong which is the funny thing where you could have bet the house that you thought something would succeed so yeah so it's just as cliche as it sounds i hate cliches but it's a matter of you know just keep doing the little things well trying to win the day and i i just really feel like you know i like the kind of thought processes that you know, all the, all the things you work on now, the habits now, you know, they're going to help you in the future. So yeah, right now, what I'm sure. in life is kind of the results of all my habits the last three to five years. So I just feel like if I keep improving those little things now, not sure exactly where, but I said, I'd love to keep growing. I'd love to get to, you know, 200, 400, 500,000 people using my programs around the yeah. world. I really do believe everything that I can do that. And, you know, just like you guys, I recently started a podcast, um, the Coach Mark Garrett podcast. It's been number one in Australia in fitness awesome. a few times the last couple of weeks. And, um, yeah, so I'd, I'd just love to grow that. It was something I never thought I'd like doing, but talking to but talking, I've actually enjoyed and so, something different to having to just to post a reel or something. Yeah. So I'd, I'd love to grow that. There's no real – I'm not sure how you guys do it, but for me, obviously, podcasts, there's no real kind of financial incentive, so to, so to speak, like social media, but it's just something that I am, I've I've really enjoyed and can kind of give you a new kind of yeah. hobby outside of just, man, how's this following going on social media, on Instagram or something like that? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. It's a great way to, to give value. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just want to say, Mark, before we just kind of like wrap up here, man, like just thank you so much for this, man. And um, just commend you just on like just being cur- courageous, you know, bold, like your story. Uh, one of my mentors told me, he was our personal growth mentor. He said that your greatest gift lies next to your deepest wound. And that always stuck with me. And, you know, just by getting to know you this past hour, man, like your deepest wound seems like some of the trauma you went through and the mental health issues, but you've used it as a gift to inspire other people, man. And I just truly see that. So I have no doubt you're going to reach so many different people through your podcast or your products, but Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and respect. Thank you. Absolute Likewise. pleasure to be on, guys. I was going to say, man, I don't know if I could top that, Chris, but yeah, it's, man, it's, it's been great, man. Honestly, like I've really enjoyed this conversation. Like yeah. I just, I just Good. love like, like your, your, your mindset, your attitude, and just like, you know, your outlook on life too. It's uh, it's, it's awesome. Thank you. It means a lot. And it's an You're absolute welcome. pleasure to come on guys. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So where can um, the listeners follow you, man? Like your podcast, see some of your products, your social media handles, all that. Yeah. So I've got a few different things. So it's the Coach Mark Carroll podcast, but on Instagram, Coach Mark Carroll. And obviously my website is coachmarkcarroll.com. And I also have a education company, um, carrollperformance.com. So Carroll Performance is basically... um, We have a worldwide certification to qualify personal trainers. Anyone who wants to become a certified personal trainer, we have students all around the world. So you can get qualified with us if you want to become a trainer in the gym online. So we have students in UK, Asia, America, and then also we have um, an advanced program design course, which is, I think, one of the most comprehensive program design courses in the world. It's over 40 hours and all things kind of periodization that's targeted at you know, really good coaches who want to be amazing at programs because that's 
my passion, you know, sold a lot of programs for a reason. And so that's why I created that course to help coaches, you know, have that improved skill set. So yeah, so coach Mark Carroll and Carroll Performance. So come find me. Awesome, man. No, plenty of places to find you, man. So we'll have all that linked up in the show notes. So uh, guys, go, go, go check out Mark. He's doing some great stuff. And uh, yeah, Mark, thanks again, man, for your time. Really appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Pleasure. You're very welcome. All right, guys, until the next episode. All right, I hope that you got one insight, one little nugget, one aha moment so you can sit there and take action in your guys' health and fitness coaching business from Mark Carroll's insights and this interview. Next thing I want you to do, if you're looking to build a six-figure coaching business and you're a health and fitness professional, watch this new training right here. We give you guys six new ways to do it.